It's no secret, over the decades I've reviewed thousands of new products and services, and I can honestly say that none have been as unique and timely as this one. This is Microclimate's new air. And while it looks like something an astronaut would wear, it's actually a state-of-the-art, ventilated and filtered helmet-style device that promises to offer a much higher level of protection than a typical mask. Stay tuned. In a moment, you'll meet Michael Hall, the CEO and founder of Microclimate, and he'll tell us more about his new air product. And that starts right now on The Gadget Guru. When we look back, 2020 will most likely be known as the year of the mask. And if you're like me, you're probably sick and tired of wearing them and are looking forward to exiting the days of the new normal and getting back to, well, the old normal. While there's been some promising news on the vaccine front just recently, COVID is still here and the case numbers are rising with more mask mandates announced in some areas and with speculation that a nationwide mask mandate could be coming in the very near future, Microclimate's Air just may be the right product for those, like me, who are taking COVID seriously and are staying home other than when absolutely necessary. Joining me today is Michael Hall, the founder and CEO of Microclimate. Michael, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. I'll start by asking, what is the Air and how does it work? It's a uh, full face uh, covering. We, we use a, an acrylic um, ellipsoid dome um, and we're fully filtering the air that comes in and comes out. Those pleated HEPA filters are uh, filtering the air coming in. And then there's two exhaust fans in the front um, that are pulling air through, through filters for the exhaust. So essentially it's, it's, um, it's a mask that, uh, uh, that seals at the neck. So in, instead of sealing or around the face and, and, and the nose, um, we're, we're not touching any of that. That's part of what makes it much more comfortable than the typical mask. And also I'd say this seal um, is much more robust and much easier to do than, than a typical mask. The neck is round. Um, this feels you know, more like uh, clothing. Um, than, than anything else. And, and, and so that's, I guess, the basics of, of what it is. How is using the air helmet different from wearing a typical mask? A lot of personal protective equipment, um, it was always designed uh, to protect the wearer, right? This, this is kind of a new thing that we're getting into with, with COVID as this has gone on to put on the mask for others, um, right? And so we're trying to be really careful with, the, with this product to, uh, to handle both of, of those situations well. First off, yeah, the, the, the filters and fans to um, get the exhaust air out and make sure it's safe you know, around others. But then um, I'd, I'd say, yeah, masks struggle you know, many times with, with those seals around those contours of the face, right? Because you have, um, especially on some of the uh, uh, concave features, right? If, if you have a flexible mask, um, there's going to be gaps. Um, and, and so that's, that's where, again, we, we think this seal around the neck can do a lot, a lot better job um, to, to help, the, again, the incoming air and, and the outgoing. I know that in your first generation of the product, just as you stated, that, that your feel was, okay, you, you cover up your face, because as we remember from day one, of, of COVID, they said, wash your hands, whatever you do, don't touch your face. Well, on a standard mask, you're touching your eyes and that's just not a good thing. But you've now shifted away from just using the cloth as the barrier of using four HEPA filters along with fans. Can you explain how that works on both when you're inhaling and exhaling? Yeah, so what's happening is, so the fabric that we have is um, impermeable. Um, and, so, and so there isn't any air uh, go, going through here. Maybe I can show it um, better here, but if you look inside, you can see the white in there. So, so what's happening is when I exhale, um, air is going through these filters and then through these 
fans. If I pull down the fabric, you might, you might be able to see it. And then uh, exhaust, exhausting there. And then what you can't quite, it's a little harder to see, but it, uh, along the back of, of here too, there's, there's also filters. So there's um, four of these. These, these, these filters. Um, so the exhaust is going through half of, of two of them. So a total of essentially one of these filters is, is doing the exhaust. And then um, the other two halves, another two, two full filters are, are what's uh, um, bringing the intake. And, and the reason we do that is it allows the, the pressure within the mask to be really low. This, this is the other challenge. You've, many have probably experienced this. If you put on a typical mask and actually press it against your face to make sure that there's no leaks and then try to breathe, you'll, you'll feel quite a bit of resistance, right? So, so when you breathe out, you'll, you'll feel this, this high pressure. And when you breathe in, it, it'll suck in against your face. Um, a lot of work, the, the reason we, we wanted to use such big, we have over 200 square inches of surface area with this. And what that allows us to do is get the, the pressure down so low that when you're breathing, um, well, the fans are giving you ventilation anyways, but, but really you don't feel much when you're inhaling um, and, and exhaling. Um, another thing we do is by putting the filter, the, these fans in front um, and pulling right where you're breathing, that also helps to keep you know, this from fogging up. With, with a typical uh, mask, um, you'd see that pretty quickly. And if I turn off these fans, um, you probably experienced this, uh, Andy, in, in just a few seconds. When I, when I first unboxed it and, and I put it on, I did read your instructions. I'm pretty good about doing that before I dive into a product. And you were very clear in there. Before you put it on, turn on the fan. Luckily, it came fully charged and then put it on. Well, I tried it after I took it off, took the fan off. And yes, it did fog up, but there was zero fogging with the fan on, so that worked really, really well. Now, other than its unique look, let's talk about the effectiveness. How does this compare to, on a safety basis, to an N95 mask? We're using HEPA 11, um, and uh, this is, uh, many have, have, have said that it's comparable to, to N95. We're waiting to get our own lab results um, to, to, to show that, but our internal testing um, is looking quite good. The other part of it is uh, that the filter is one part and the other part is the, is the ceiling. As you can imagine, you, you know, even if you've got a, a really good filter inside your face mask, if there's big leaks around it, you, you know, it's not N95, it's N0, right? So um, we, we think that's another area where we'll have higher performance but again, we, we are, um, you know, hesitating a little bit here. We are working on eventually on uh, applications for medical and for um, educational. But right now, air is focused on air transit. Uh, this is really to get you, um, there's lots of uh, instances in our life where we've got to have high density, right? So when you're in an airplane, on a train, a bus, um, these, these, when you're commuting, many times you've got to get close to other people. Economically, this is just a, a fact of life. And so air, microclimate air, allows you to, um, in those situations, to isolate uh, at least your own air system. Now the big question. Let's say you're wearing this bubble on your head. What happens when you sneeze? It's actually something I've tested quite a bit. I actually have uh, a solar reflex. Have you heard of this? So I can just go out into the sun. A few other people have this work um, and I'll sneeze. And uh, so um, usually what, what I'll do is, is just sneeze down into the scarf, kind of like that. I have done sneezes straight into this. The good news is, is that it catches it. So, so this is a benefit of being negative pressure. So because by, because this is negative pressure, the scarf is pushed up against me. And if I cough, you might even be able to see this on screen. <coughs> it acts as an accumulator, right? So, so, so whereas a, a normal mask would definitely, you know, there's no way to hold it on strong enough that it would take a, 
a cough, right? A cough is actually gonna, gonna push out. Um, we actually can maintain neutral pressure, if not you know, negative pressure through that whole event. Um, but uh, yeah, I found at the end of the day, sneeze or no sneeze, it's, and it's pretty amazing to see, see how it works. I'll see little spots along here. I usually gotta get a tissue and we all do this, right? As we speak, we're spitting, right? This, this is why we, we're not supposed to sing. This is why we wear a mask. But you know what's interesting about it, if somebody is sick, whether they have tested positive for COVID or they have a cold or flu, if they're wearing that and they do sneeze down to the car, you're protecting others while you're wearing it, much more so than if you're just wearing a standard mask. Yeah, I, that's what our lab tests are showing us. And, and again, we wanna, we wanna do more of the lab work and, and have you know, third parties. Uh, come and say this before we, we do a lot of these claims, but what we're seeing, we're, we're very excited about, yeah, that kind of safety aspect um, of, a, of, of that, that courtesy, right? Of if, I, if I'm sick and, and, I, and I throw this on, now everybody around me should feel safer. How about the weight? How much does this weigh? So it's uh, 1.75 pounds. Um, to give kind of some context for that, so it's, it's, uh, it's a bit heavier than uh, like a bicycle helmet would be, but um, quite a deal lighter than maybe like a motorcycle helmet. I had no issues at all with the weight. In fact, it was fairly comfortable. The issue I had, I'm not a big guy, and the helmet was very large on me. Now, I noticed that you, inter that you include two different size pads that can go in there, and the thicker pads were what was defaulted in there and it still was loose on me. Is there any solutions coming for that to make it more of a secure fit? Uh, yes, we, we have um, a few prototypes we've been, we've been using where we, where we have a strap around the back similar to um, what, it, what you'd see in maybe bicycle helmets. And I, tell you, I don't know if this is good news or not so good news. I guess I was lucky that I did order early. The price was 199 but I just saw last night, you know, while you're honoring all your pre-orders, that new orders, there's a new price on that. Can you go through what changed? Yeah, so um, many early supporters like yourself, when, when you saw the first uh, device that, that we were gonna do, um, it's not this one, but, but uh, we were using, we, were, we had a permeable fabric and, and the fabric was our filter. Um, and we nearly, we were about to take to pull the trigger and take that to production, um, but we, in the end, we decided we wanted these these HEPA filters. Um, it was the right decision to do. However, once we got all that in and started to learn our our cogs, our, our cost of goods sold, um, we realized that uh, they were higher than than we had thought. So yes, so while we're gonna we're gonna honor that that earlier price, the uh, the 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 price as of today is 299 um, uh, you know, going forward. It was those filters. The other thing that's happening too is we're, we're air freighting nearly everything. Um, and, and so we, we do, uh, you know, hope eventually is this, is this scales. Um, the, the, we'll have a good, better, best model. Eventually we'll have, we'll have different models with different features um, at many different price points. Uh, but for now, for this premium product, this is, uh, we're going to be two ninety nine. dollars and, and let me point out, your batteries, I believe they last six to eight hours, you know, per charge on here. How about the filters? How often do they need to be changed? And, and what's the cost for replacements? Yeah, so the filters, uh, a replacement for the whole set, for, for all four, is uh, $39. And um, they, they do last quite a while. I, I mean, this isn't a just a small filter because we we, we made it we made them very large, with huge surface area for the uh, to get our pressure down for performance um, and comfort. But a byproduct of that means that they, they last you know quite a while. So we're learning more about this as this goes on. Our, our general recommendation right now is three months with with normal um, use. But uh, yeah, we're right in the middle of this to to learn this, to, to watch. We have pressure sensors and, and we're watching as they age. Um, when does the pressure go up? Um, in terms of safety, you know, as you may know, the, the filter isn't gonna get less effective as, as it gets uh, uh, older. Um, and so really this is, uh, we, we think for many of our customers, this will be a long life item. 
Now, I ordered mine probably four or five months ago, and I believe you're just now shipping out your initial orders. If somebody wants to order one now, what's your lead time if they put in a fresh order today? Right now, we're telling people um, if, if you make an order today, don't, ex don't expect it until December. Um, but our team is, our production team, it's, it's just been a few weeks that we've been producing, um, but we had a doubling um, each, each week. We're adding more people, we're adding more automation. Um, and so, yeah, we, we hope to, our goal is by the end of the year to have the, the backlog um, finished and, and have them in stock so, so that people will be able to get them on demand. If people want more information, watch your videos or to place an order, where do they go? Yeah, so microclimate.com uh, is, is, the, is the best place. We, we are on some social channels as, as well, but I'd say, yeah, microclimate.com. Um, we're doing direct uh, to consumer sales within um, the continental US. Michael, I tell you, I know you're busy. I know what it's like when you're first launching a product. Everything's coming from all different directions, and I greatly appreciate your time today. Thank you for joining me. My pleasure. The easiest way to keep posted on my news stories and videos is to simply follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash the gadget guru. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and you can subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell. One last thing, if you like this video, you're going to like this one. And if you like that one, you're going to like one of these. That's it for now. I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Park.